شکرے خدا میں رزوی ہو اللہ بائی ہز ڈیوائن گریس اینڈ بائی ہز مرسی ہیز بلیسڈ اس ود بینگ مسلمس by his divine grace and by his mercy he has made us muslims those who read the kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and proclaim it and testify and we know that true faith and true iman is tasdeeq bil qalb and iqrar bil lisan true iman is tasdeeq bil qalb and iqrar bil lisan to affirm with the heart and to proclaim with the tongue to affirm this is iman to affirm with the heart and to proclaim with the tongue and a person becomes a perfect believer when his heart and his tongue are in tandem person becomes a perfect believer when his heart and his tongue are saying the same thing not that a person is saying la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but his heart is saying something else he is only saying it because of some worldly benefit do you understand so perfect and true iman is when the heart and the tongue are in tandem in other words tasdeeq bil qalb and iqrar bil lisan are very important otherwise in reality there is no faith and allah has given us this tawfiq and he has blessed us and divinely guided us by his grace that we are muslim and we should be proud to be muslims we should honor our deen we should value our deen because allah is saying in the holy quran inna ad-deena inda allah al-islam verily deen by allah is islam verily the only deen by allah is Islam when you say deen it means islam and in a sense it means iman because iman islam and deen are three words that are synonymous with one another they are three words that are synonymous with one another so indeed in the deen and allah and islam the only deen by allah is islam So when we say deen when you say religion in simple terms it is only islam it is only islam and who are the muslims those who believe in islam those who believe in the kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam without rejecting any of the daruriyat e deen without going any against any of the fundamental essential principles of deen so we are very fortunate that allah has made us believers he has made us muslims he has granted us the tawfiq to say that allah is one we have the tawfiq to say that allah is one and we have the tawfiq to testify to that we give shahada to that that allah is one and we give shahada that muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is allah's nabi so this is our good fortune this is our good fortune that we are blessed to be believers we are blessed to be muslims it is the tawfiq from the court of allah this is a gift from the court of allah that when a person has been because without deen what does a person have so how important it is to protect this deen how important it is to protect our deen 
And when you protect your deen, then you protect all those things which are the faculties of deen. When you protect deen, then you have to protect all those things that are faculties of deen. It is a faculty of your deen to perform your salah. It is a faculty of your deen to keep fast. It is a faculty and a branch of your deen to have haya. To have modesty. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Al-haya shabadu min al-iman. That modesty, haya is a branch of faith. If you have iman and a person has no haya and no sharam, then that person cannot perfect his deen. He cannot perfect his iman. Because haya and modesty and sharam is very important. Today you find that people lack sharam. They lack haya. Do you know why? Because unfortunately such people have become the dogs of the world. I'm being blunt. We have become the slaves of the dunya. Instead of being the dogs at the court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The world people are looking sad when you hear that a Muslim is looking for a role model. It's sad when you hear a Muslim is looking for a role model. Social media has devoured the community. Social media is devouring our community. We spend more time on social media and on telephone than we spend on the musalla. We spend more time with our fingers on the keyboard than we spend using our fingers to flip over the pages of the Holy Quran. If it's wrong, tell me. Today, people can't put two lukma in their mouth without having a phone in their hand. Look at ourselves. Even when you sit to eat, do you know whether you said Bismillah or not? Because you are so busy with the phone, you don't even know what you're eating. What is this? This is us falling into the trap of the kuffar. This is us falling into the trap of the kuffar. If you need to understand what we need to do to value our deen, this deen which Allah is saying is the only deen. We will never be able to... We've forgotten, I think we've forgotten. We've forgotten that we have to go into our graves one day. We have forgotten that mouth is going to come to every home. Every home mouth is going to come. It has come and it will come. And it will continue to come. Until there will be no person left on Alam dunya Nobody will be left. Nothing will be existing. Only Wahdi Qahar. Allah, one, the eternal. All eternal. Nothing will be left. Only the Creator, the entire creation will be finished. But yet the creation is so lost in the dunya, we are so lost in the dunya, that we forget our daily responsibilities. We forget that Allah has given us 24 hours. Allah has given us 24 ghante a din. 24 ghanto ke andar aap kitne waqt Allah ke din ke liye khach karte. How much time do you spend for the deen of Allah? First question. First question that we need to ask ourselves. And you know when we have a little bit of problem in our lives. When we face a little bit of problem. Then we start crying. Then we start weeping. And saying, oh Allah, why me? Oh Allah, why me? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Oh Allah, why not me? With the way that we are living our lives. Instead of saying, oh Allah, why me? Why shouldn't we say, oh Allah, why not me? Whatever is happening is still less. This is Allah's mercy that He has saved us from direct azab. And that is why, why? One tafi him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, oh beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are saved from punishment because antafi him, because you are still amongst them. You are amongst them. Because of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being amongst us, we are protected from the direct azab. But we still don't learn. We still don't realize 
What are our responsibilities? When the musibah comes, قَالْ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ Yes, yes, you should. But why only you remember then? Why don't we remember in other times of our life? What are we doing to rectify ourselves before we go down into our graves? Do you think this deen about which Allah is saying, in the deen in the Allah Islam, this is the only deen by Allah. Do you think that this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reached us easily? Today we sit in our cars and in our mansions and in our homes. And we forget how this deen reached us. We forget the value of this deen that we have. Youngsters, and I said as I just a little while ago, that I'm amazed when a Muslim young man says that I'm looking for a role model. I'm looking for somebody, I'm looking for an ideal. I'm looking for an example to follow in my life. Allahu Akbar. Have you not heard of Muhammad Rasulullah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are a Muslim. And you want to look for an ideal and an example to follow? There is no greater example than Allah's Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is no greater example than Allah's Rasul. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That Nabi that walks on this earth, that even the stones and the rocks on the earth hug his sacred feet. That when he walks on the earth, even the rocks and the stones embrace his sacred feet. And the rocks, the, what is the nature of rock? What is the nature of rock? Rock is hard. You can bang your foot as much as you want on a rock. Nothing will happen to the rock, but something will happen to your foot. Nothing will happen to the rock, but something will happen to your foot. It will be hurt. It will be injured. You have to bang onto the rock. Still nothing will happen. But look at the greatest example of mankind. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would walk on a rock, the rocks would start to melt. They would embrace the sacred feet of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into themselves. Why? Because they understood that this is the value of that qadam of Rasul Ipaq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They understood that this is the one who brought the deen about which Allah is saying in the deen in the Allah Islam. He is the one who brought this deen. The rocks were taking his Mubarak feet. That's why Huzur Sayyidi Umur Shadi, Sarkari Taji Sharia Radi Lang so beautifully says, Patana tha ke nature unke zere pa musakhar hai. Patana tha ke nature unke zere pa musakhar hai. Bana patar pe yu nakshe kafe pa mere sarwar. This is why the impression of the foot of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam formed on rocks to show that the natural and the, 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 the norms of the dunya are where they are beneath the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are submitted under the holy feet of Rasulullah sallallahu So why does a person need to seek an example when he has the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why does he need to look elsewhere when he has those who taught us how to love Allah's Nabi, who taught us how to live in deen, People like Hadrat Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq radiallahu Hadrat Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu Hadrat Usman bin Nurain radiallahu ta'ala Hadrat Sayyidina Ali Murtada radiallahu anhu Can we not find those? Why does a woman have to say that I need to look on social media to find somebody who will guide me? Rather misguide nowadays. If I look on social media to find somebody who will be my role model you're not looking in social media. Turn your vision towards Medina. Turn your sight towards Jannatul Baqi. And you will find the best example in Fatima al Zahra. You'll find a beautiful example. Go to Jannatul Ma'la. And you'll find a beautiful example of Khadijatul Qubra on whom Allah sent salam. On Sayyidatul Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anhu. And I'm going to give you an example today, very quickly, of how this deen reached you and what we got, what, what they went through. We have it in comfort. And since I said about role models and true ideals and people that we should follow, those who follow the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're saying, you're trying to say, I don't know who to follow. I don't know who to follow. Allah has told you in the Quran who to follow. 
Allah wa achiyu rasul. Allah has said, follow, obey Allah and obey Allah's rasul. Allah has said, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. If you want to attain the pleasure of Allah, then the beloved Allah is saying to the beloved Nabi, say to them, follow me. Why do you want to look elsewhere? Follow the beloved Nabi and follow those who followed the Nabi in every generation. In every era, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as I said, you want to look for people everywhere. We are all running on social media to see who everybody on social media is saying, hey, so this person has got so many thousand followers. So many hundred thousand followers. Great guy. A very powerful person has so many followers. It's not about how many followers they have. It's about who they follow. Yes, if there's some great personality that has got great followers, whatever is on paper and on numbers on the screens makes no difference. It is about the heart. Sarkari Ghose Park is sitting in Baghdad and the entire dunya is following. Aja Garibu Nawaz is in Ajmer Sharif and everybody from the east and west is following. Ala Hadrat is under the dome in Bareli Sharif and the entire dunya is saying, Imam Ahl Sunnah. This is following. This is real following. This is when it is and this is what will assist us in our cover. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me take you back and myself back more than 1400 years. Let us go back more than 1400 years. And whatever I'm going to tell you, I'm telling myself first, like I always do. But I want you today to listen deeply with the eyes, with the ears of your heart. I want you to listen to this very deeply. This narration with the ears of your heart. Dil ki It's more than 1400 years ago. There is a personality by the name of Hadrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu. Hadrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu is a sahabi of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That fortunate sahabi as well. That his father Yasir is also a sahabi. Hadrat Ammar ibn Yasir, his that sahabi radiallahu anhu. That also his father is a sahabi. And not only his father, his mother, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Sumayya radiallahu anha is also a sahabiya. Son sahabi, mother sahabiya, father sahabi. Like Hadrat Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anha. Eh? Hadrat Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anha sahabi. His father, Hadrat Abu Qahafa radiallahu anha sahabi. His mother, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Ummul Khair sahabiya. So these people understood Islam. These were the fortunate personalities. They were the stars of the spiritual star, sky that were going around the moon of Islam. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. More than fourteen hundred years ago, I want to tell you how we got this deen and what sacrifices were made. Hadrat Sayyiduna. Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu an and his father Hadrat Yasir radiallahu an and his mother and his mother Sayyidatuna Sumayya radiallahu anha are amongst the early Muslims we're going back more than 1400 years they are amongst the early Muslims and his mother his mother Hadrat said, Ammar, I'm, on, I'm taking you back to make sure, so you understand something. Hadrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu's mother, Hadrat Sayyidatuna Sumayya radiallahu, have you heard her name before? No. Why? Why we don't hear? You claim to be getting knowledge from social media. Why haven't you heard her name? Because we are too busy doing everything else rather than, th than picking a book on the seerah of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather than reading about the life of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this woman Sayyidatuna Sumayya radiallahu anha is the first Muslim woman to be made shaheed in this deen. Samajre? She is the first Muslim female martyr. Who killed her? Abu Jahl the cursed. Because why was she killed? Because she said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
is reported in the, in, in, in the narrations that they would be the father and the son and the mother together. The kuffar in Makkah used to persecute them. They used to punish them. They used to torment them. They used to cause them distress. And when the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would go past, when the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam would pass the area where sometimes they were being tormented by the kuffar owners because they were the slaves. When they were being tormented, the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to go past and used to say sabran al yasr. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to go past and used to say, "Oh family of Yasir, be patient." For indeed your final place is in Jannat. Allah. Indeed your final place is in Jannat. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam saw them going through this taklif, and while they were still here, Rasul Ipaq sallallahu gave them kush khabri of Jannat al-Firdaus. Why? Because of their sacrifice for Allah's deen. Because of their sacrifice for Allah's deen, this family, and I'm telling you about them today, so you understand whom you should follow, and how we got this deen of Allah. This family, I'm giving you one example only. It's only one example of one family in the time of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That they were persecuted day and night, and it was because they didn't have any supporters in Makkah at that time. Because other people had their family members and friends, etc., who protected them, who or who stood for them. But they had nobody there at that time. They had nobody there at that time, and they were persecuted terribly. They would be made to lie on the burning sands of Arabia. And while lying on that sand, they would be persecuted. And amongst those that were persecuted with them was Hazrat Sayyidina Suhaib, Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Fuqayha radiallahu anha, another blessed female companion. Hazrat Fuqayha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And included with them, the person who took the torment, but still said, Ahad, Ahad. Hazrat Sayyidina Bilal al-Habashi radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hazrat Amir bin Fuhaira radiallahu anhu. These were amongst the people that were punished like this by the kuffar. Why? Because they brought iman. Because they brought iman. And I want to tell you one walk and I'm ending with this. On the same family, subhanallah. For us to think what they had gone through. What hardship that they had gone through. It is stated that Hazrat Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu. The kuffar used to take him. And his mother and 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 and, and you know what they, how the kuffar, how did the kuffar treat them? Do you know how did they treat them? Their slave master used to gamble, so he kept them as security for a gambling. And when he lost, he, the other owner took them. This is how they were treated. But they were they were they were they were tormented and persecuted. But they remain on the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That is why more than 1,400 years now, and we are still taking their name. That is why more than 1,400 years, all those people that we run behind on the social media, think about it. After how long do they even know your name? Go on, hey. To them, you are a number. You are a number. You are nothing. But look at this. More than 1,400 years have passed in the land of Arabia. A personality with his mother and his father stood firm for the deen of Allah more than 1,400 years ago in Africa. 1,400 years after in Africa, his name has been taken from a member of a masjid. Not only here, throughout the world, throughout the world, because he is one of the narrators whose hadith is narrated in Bukhari and Muslim as well. That Hadir said, Nammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu taala an. You know how they used to do to them? Hadir Nammar ibn Yasir, radiallahu taala an. Would be burnt with fire. The kuffar in Makkah used to take fire, and they used to burn Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu an. And Subhanallah, in that state, once the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by him, rahmatul lil alamin, rahatil ashikin. The beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu an once. Whilst the kuffar were burning him with fire, and as the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed by him, the beloved Rasul put his hand on his head. Allahu Akbar. At that moment, I'm sure Hazrat Ammar felt nothing about the burning. He felt nothing about the burning, for on his head was the hand of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was the shafqat and the mahabbat and the rahmah 
of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He ran his Mubarak hand on the head of other the Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu. And what did the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Say Subhanallah, and I will tell you what he said. What did he say? He said, Ya Nar, Kuni Bardo wa Salaman ala Ammarin. Ya Nar, Kuni Bardo wa Salaman ala Ammarin, Kama Kunti ala Ibrahim. The Quran says, Ya Nar, Kuni Bardo wa Salaman ala Ibrahim. The Quran says, Allah says, when Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim was thrown into the fire, Namrud, then Allah said, O oh fire, become cool with peace upon Ibrahim. And when the Nabi passed by Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu in this state, he ran his Mubarak hand on his head and he said, O oh fire, become cool with peace upon Yasir. Become cool with peace about, upon Yasir. Like you became cool upon Ibrahim al Islam. What a dua. From where? From the blessed lips of Rasul Ipaq. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. These are the people that we should be thinking about. These are the people should, that should be our examples. These are the personalities because of whom today we have this deen which Allah told us about. Inna deen Allah in Islam. Which Allah told us in the Holy Quran that this deen is the only deen by Allah. We are khush nasib that we are Muslims. We are khush nasib that we have iman. Today we are going from pillar to post. We are going from pillar to post. Trying to find peace. Our deen is peace. Yes, Maybe if we leave the ways of the dunya and attract our hearts towards deen, then we will get the pleasure of this deen. The companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what difficulties they went through. What hardships they went through. Look at Hadrat Sayyidatuna Sumiya. It is a name that you should remember, for it is the first Muslim woman that was martyred for the sake of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think of the names. Today when you ask somebody when they have kids, people phone or they message and they say, Maulana, can you give me a name for the child? They will listen to ten names, but will keep the name of a film star. They will listen to ten names, but in the end, because this is a football player. This is a film star. And you say, I'm trying to look for a good name. You're a Muslim and you're looking for a good name. <laughs> there are treasures of names in Islam. But we want to leave all of them because we want to attribute our child to some dunyadar. You must remember, the child becomes the manifestation of the name that you keep. If you keep the child's name Muhammad, then that child will be blessed with the barakat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what, wrong? What's, what is wrong? What problem is then if you keep one Muhammad or two Muhammad or three Muhammads? But we don't want to do it today. We don't want to keep Fatima. We don't want to keep Amin and Khadija. We want to see one name that some actress has got. What is this? This is the cause of our ruin and our destruction. This is why we are in this, in this, in, in this uh, terrible condition. Because we have forgotten our duty. We have forgotten our zimidari to this deen. And we have forgotten the very important thing that nobody stays here forever. Neither I nor you. Everybody's gonna go. But what are we doing before we go? What are we doing before we go? What change are we planning to make in our lives? May Allah give us tawfiq khair. May Allah bless us with understanding that we are fortunate to be in this deen of Allah. We are fortunate to be under the ummah of, in the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. This is Allah's mercy upon us. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us with iman. Let's us leave this world with iman. Those who are ill, Allah grant them shifai kamil said.